I want to talk about hegemony. We don't need Maoism. Okay, we don't need people killing in the name of a non-god sacred. That's as lethal. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, and I'll come back to a, a, a global ethic in a moment. The other thing is the following. Abraham came up with Yahweh 4,900 years ago. It was, it was a superb advance in civilization. He really was a pretty mean guy, Yahweh. He was a guy. He was a jealous God. And he said to Abraham, bring your only son Isaac and sacrifice him. And then he said to Abraham, well, now that you're ready to sacrifice him, you know, thanks. You believe in me. You're a good guy. That's a terrible thing to do. That's a hideous thing for a God to do. It made sense 4,900 years ago in the desert. Sam Harris points out in Letter to a Christian Nation that one of the Ten Commandments says, Thou shalt not steal which meant one Israelite shouldn't steal from another Israelite and take his property. That property included the slaves that the second Israelite held. Do any of us now think that it's morally appropriate uh, to protect somebody else's slaves? Well, of course not. Our morality evolves. But our sense of God evolves. Jesus as God is a much nicer God. It's God of love, compassion, um, omnipotence, uh, omniscience, loving kindness presents us with the problem of evil. And he does keep mucking around in the universe if he's a theistic God, which is kind of tough with respect to science, right? So another thing to think about, and I mean this really seriously, and you may think I'm just being stupid. God's our invention. Can we recreate God to fit now? the natural universe that we live in and find a meaningful sense of a God that's just nature, just the creativity that we're in, to which we can give awe and rest. Well, I don't know the answer, but maybe we can. And at least I think we ought to talk about it. Okay? I'm going to end by talking about a global ethic and a global civilization. We really need to invent a global ethic. Well, I want to say something about the sacred. How many gods have we invented in the last 100,000 years? Lots. Thousands and thousands. They've all told us what sacred is, right? So what's been going on? Either there's thousands and thousands of gods and they've told us what is sacred, or there's one god and they, that god's told us that different things are sacred, or We've told our gods what we think is sacred, and then they've told us. Well, that's really what's been going on, of course. And that means that we've always been talking to ourselves, which is kind of neat, you know, it's really human. <laughs> it's us talking to ourselves about what sacred is. Have we maybe reached the stage in human civilization where we can just glimpse the possibility of taking over for ourselves our own sense of what we deem worthy of holding sacred. It doesn't mean it's not sacred. It doesn't mean that we will all agree with one another. But we can talk about it, and that which we deem most worthy, we can hold sacred. It's our choice. We don't have to give up sacredness. We just have to realize that it's our choice and make it. Okay. With that comes the rudiments of a global ethic. And we need a global ethic that, for example, in my view, says something like, I respect all of life on the planet, but we, we, you know, probably lots of things. I'm not wise enough to invent a global ethic, but I think we need one. And I think we need it for the reasons I started with. We have all the civilizations that we've talked about. We have no shared, sacred, safe place to talk to one another. And I actually think it's we who do not believe in God who need to take the lead. People who find their solace in a God in heaven and hell have so much at stake and so much to lose by giving up their belief. It's going to be extremely hard for them. 
but we can take on um, the role of saying, of course we need something to live our lives by. And I want to say with respect to being a human, a secular humanist, which I've been all my life, I'm coming to think that it's too, if you take it in a narrow sense of just, you know, us folks, okay, it's too narrow a view. We're children of 3.8 billion years of evolution. That's why you have the lump in your brain you do that affects your morals. How dare we pay no attention to that? I mean, we're animals. We've evolved. Uh, we really are members of a creative universe. We're members of it. If that's God, we're God. Not in the sense of supernatural powers. We're co-creating this discussion right now. Okay? So, so I think, I really think it's up to us more than anybody else. And one response is, this guy Coffin's gone over to the dark side. I, I hope you don't think I have. I don't, I don't want to go back to a church. And I, I certainly don't want monism, so I'll, I'll, I guess I really, really know that. We do have at least one tradition that says you can evolve your morals wisely. And it's British common law. Okay? In which the British common law is the congealed wisdom of the Brits for 600 years since the Magna Carta. Okay, there's, there's no legislation. It's just a bunch of judges making findings. And some of them ricochet through the law widely and become presidents that change the law, and others don't. So the law evolves, and it fits with its times as the times evolve. So we don't want a monism. We need a way of evolving our sense of the sacred and our sense of what is moral as we evolve. And we need to figure out how to evolve it wisely. And I don't think we know. But it's another thing we have to talk about. So I guess I'll end with that. Okay? Thank you very, very much for listening. Because this is being recorded, if you have questions, we're going to ask you to line up at that microphone. Um, Ed, and perhaps you can start us off there. Can you How quickly do you do it? You know, I don't think I can do this talk anymore. <laughs> no, because I didn't pick up the... And even more important, whoever's recording us can do it. Actually, uh, don't worry about it. That, that's not going to work. But but do line up there anyway and pretend that it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll pretend that's good. I'll repeat the question. The question. Yeah. Okay. Say it loudly enough so that I can hear. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. You uh, you mentioned that you're all in favor of a global ethics, and I think uh, uh, most of us, or at least most of us, would agree. Uh, but I think to attain that uh, presents a bit of a problem. Uh, well, let, let me put it this way. The use of language can either assist in achieving this goal or create problems. And it seems to me uh, that uh, using religious language in a scientific uh, environment or trying to portray um, a promoting a, a, a 